Welcome back to TechMaker. This is Exploring Ethereum with Web3.js, Part 2. In the last episode, we got set up with Infura, Web3, Node, and a variety of other things. And if you haven't watched that one yet, I would encourage you to go do that unless you're already sort of familiar with the topic. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can actually interact with smart contracts, not just the Ethereum network and balances of addresses but how can we look at smart contracts and call various functions on them? If you start reading through the documentation, you'll find this web3.eth.contract. Now, what this allows us to do is easily interact with smart contracts, or so it says, on the Ethereum blockchain, which it actually is pretty easy once you kind of get your head around a few things, um, but it's not super intuitive, in my opinion, at the very beginning. So the first concept that you may not be familiar with is this concept of an ABI. ABI stands for Application Binary Interface. And basically what it is, is you need to tell essentially your JavaScript what functions exist on the smart contract you're trying to operate on. So you need to know at least some or all of the functions. And what I mean by some or all is if you're only going to use one function on a smart contract, you only need that piece of the ABI. Um, but we won't be getting into that. We're just going to kind of look through some basics at any rate. So the easiest sort of contract to get started with are ERC20 contracts, which is what most or all of the tokens that you've heard of on the Ethereum network are built on top of. So let's do that. So I basically started by doing a quick Google search for ERC20 ABI. And I came across this one from District Zero, or District Zero X. Uh, and so it looks basically right. So if we just copy this, we're gonna use that. So just grab the whole line here, just double click and it should get the whole bit of code. So we're back in the terminal. I'm going to go ahead and open up a node console. So we're going to continue from yesterday. So yesterday we had var web3 equals require web3 and we should get all the same stuff we had yesterday. Then I'm just going to paste in my infura link from yesterday. And we should be good to go. And now what we need to do is load up that ERC20 ABI. So I'm going to call it there ERC20 ABI equals and then just paste in all the stuff that I copied from that GitHub link we were on. Okay, so now what we're going to do is actually load this up. So if we do something like well, first of all, we could say uh, contract there contract equals. So we need to say new eth web three dot eth dot capital C contract and then erc twenty abi. Now, if we look at this contract, let's see what we've got. So. You can see that it, it actually loaded up everything. I'm not gonna take you through all that. You can go ahead and read through it, but you can do this and say contract.methods. And you can see that our ABI defines some things for us. So we have a, an approve function, a total supply function, a transfer function, balance of transfer, approve and call allowance. So these are essentially the core concepts in ERC20. I'm not going to talk you through all of that right now, but you should definitely go read up on it if you're interested in Ethereum development because it's a very sort of integral concept at this point. So basically what we've defined here is a wrapper for a smart contract, and it's actually possible to deploy this. Um, I may need a few other things. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but what we want to actually do is read from something that's already on chain. We don't want to like create something new at the moment. Uh, in order to do that, we need the address of a contract that already has these particular functions defined, and that will let us call those methods on that contract. So we're going to go grab one. So back in my browser, um, I'm on Etherscan again, and on Etherscan we can look at different tokens. Um, maybe I need to go to slash tokens. 
Yeah, so here you can get a list of the ERC20 compliant tokens. I assume most of these are ERC20 compliant. I'm not 100% sure about all of them, um, but these are all deployed on the Ethereum network. Um, I'm going to go to this ZRX token, which I find really interesting personally. Um, so we can grab this address here or here. You can see the contract address. And we're going to load this up and take a look at it. So I'm going to just cycle up to where I define my contract. And I think I'm just, I think I just paste the address in, in a string after the ERC20 ABI. So basically you're defining the contract, you give it the ABI, and then you give it an address and say like, I want to define these functions, but I want you to look at the functions at this address. And so now if we look at the contract, get the same thing as before, basically um, with the approved total supply, so on and so forth. So some of these we're going to need some extra data for, and some of these we can't actually execute. Like for example, with what we have set up so far, we can't execute transfer because you have to pay a gas fee and you actually have to have tokens to execute a transfer. So we haven't loaded up any actual money or anything connected to this in order to pay a gas fee and we don't have any tokens. We probably don't even have an address defined right now. So that's not possible, but that doesn't stop us from reading uh, stuff that's already on chain. So for example, we can look at contract.methods and this is kind of a funny way you have to do this. So you have to call dot methods dot total supply. And if I just leave that, it tells me essentially what the function is and gives me a bunch of stuff, which sorry, I scroll really fast. But again, I'll let you read through this. Um, but what we actually have to do is say dot call. And this returns a promise, which means we actually need to give it a call back and the callback is takes an error and then the result and then we'll just console.log result. So what total supply is, is it's the total number of tokens in existence based on the smart contract. And you can see back here that we get, I believe they have a billion tokens and this is a billion times 10 to the 18. Um, so what we could do here is something like we did in the previous episode where we said um, uh, We'll say console.log web3.utils.from way and then we'll say results and then ether is how we want it, I believe doing all this just from memory. We'll see what happens. Seems like I missed a parenthesis. Common problem of mine. Yeah, so perfect. So that puts it in a billion. The last thing that I want to do in this episode is look at a balance for a particular address. So again, like I think spending some time on Etherscan and getting a sense of how this works is a really good idea if you're interested in blockchain development. Um, but we can see here that you have a transfer to, I believe it's this 0x4 of 34 tokens. Let's check what the balance is. So we have, let's see, this, took, this guy's got 50, 55,000 ZRX, right? So if I drill down even further, I can see this is this guy. Another really interesting tool is if you go to ethplore.io. I missed it. And then we paste this in here. We can see everything that this address has in it. So you have 55,000 ZRX right here. Okay, so let's use that address and let's see what we get. So back in the terminal, I'm gonna cycle up through, well, now I'll just type and quit being lazy. So we'll say contract.methods.total 
balance of, and then I believe I have to pass in the address here. We're about to find out. Dot call, and then we need our error result console dot log result. How many parentheses do I need? Just the two. Okay, so we get 55,160. And as you can see here, that is the same number. Now, obviously, we need to convert that to the ether level, basically. Um, it's got uh, 18 decimal places that that needs to move before that's going to read properly. Um, but at any rate, um, you've seen how to do that now, so you can do that yourself. Um, that's pretty much it for this episode. I'm probably going to do a few more episodes around reading data from the blockchain because I think there's a lot of stuff we can do here. Like, It'd be interesting to look at how to pull back various transactions for an address, maybe figure out um, sort of what tokens a person is holding based on their list of transactions. Um, things like that. So essentially what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to go through several more uh, pieces of reading data and then we're actually going to build an application that you can just put an address in and then basically read out all of the balances and values and get a valuation similar to this, right? So I want to show you how to make this type of screen in the end. Um, but that's going to take a little bit of effort to get to that point. So Anyway, um, that's it for this episode, and I'll talk to you soon. If you're on YouTube, click subscribe because we're releasing videos every day. Also, go check out techmaker.tv. You can subscribe over there, um, and be sure to like the video and leave any comments. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.